Joining us again, a family therapist, Jane Marks. Glad to have you here, Jane. Good morning, uh, Kelly. We're talking about something really important here that can be hard for parents to try to talk about, hard for them to even comprehend all about teen suicide. And so many times parents kind of want to put it out of their minds and not even think about it. But this is really important for them to start thinking about it, potentially even have to address it in their own children. Yeah, the unfortunate thing about teen suicide is that it is the third leading cause of death for young wow. people between the ages of 15 and 24. It's only surpassed by homicide and accidents. And so families too often at least are experiencing it personally or have friends or have children who have friends. And so it behooves parents to have, as well as teens, to have a kind of an understanding of what happens and mm -hmm. why a kid who's at risk may even want to make this, you know, make this choice. But we start with being aware of, the, of all the possible warning signs. So number one, if you hear your friends talking of death, any mention of dying, disappearing or, or participating in self-harm, or putting their affairs in order, or saying goodbye, mm -hmm. these, that's really a huge red flag. Recent loss, thoughts of death, s separation, broken relationships are also triggers. Change of personality, sadness, extreme withdrawal, irritability. A, you know what, it's interesting, it's like a sudden sense of calm and happiness after being extremely depressed. That, you know, that's almost always a trigger that something is amiss here or that there may be a plan. Change in behavior, compromised concentration, change in work habits, unable to manage daily tasks, change in sleep patterns, insomnia, compromised sleep. You know, there's so many, there's so many triggers here. Changes in eating habits, loss of appetite, uh, extreme weight loss, fear of losing control, behaving erratically, you know, and for, for guys, sometimes you'll see anger just come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Now, when, and when you, there's just so many possible um, triggers that may occur, but you know, when you see these changes, now, I think the important thing is what do you do exactly. if you should see this happen? And for, because for a lot of us, we're not sure what to do. Do we step back? Do we move in? The first thing we tell our teens particularly is remain calm and to try to get a sense of exactly what's going on. I even, in these I wanted to make sure we covered. Um, ask the teen if he or she is thinking about suicide. And that's a tough question for teens as well as adults because you know, you don't want to infringe on somebody's privacy. Focus on your concerns about their well-being. This is critical. Listen, do not judge, offer hope, Remove, if you can, anything that might, you know, mean self-harm. Sometimes a kid will carry a knife or scissors and you think, you know what, you know, just for right now, why don't you give that to me? Mm -hmm. And I think most importantly for teens and for parents, um, and if you suspect that is happening, get help as soon as you can. I think so often in situations like that, the regrets are is that we are bystanders as a you know, as opposed to being part of the solution. And uh, one of the things that we do know about suicide is that friends and supports, we, we can be part of a resilience team. And so, you know, this is a critical life-saving event that as people in our community and as stewards of our friends and our children, we can be a part of. We cannot get this information out there enough. There are so many local resources. Absolutely. There are national support systems and groups that you can be a part of, your family can be a part of. So we really appreciate, Jane, all of your advice. And of course, you can find it online, WTXL.TV. Thank you so much for being here. We always oh, appreciate it. It's my pleasure. Stay with us. We're back in just two minutes.